Let's build an end-to-end -end LLM application in this video and trace it using LangSmith. So we are learning LangChain and its other products. In this video, we will focus on LangSmith. But if you have not subscribed to Unfold Data Science, please go ahead and subscribe and please also press the like button because that's the only motivation for me. Let's start. If you go on the LangChain website and click on products, right? You are going to see there are three components. One is called LangChain, another is called LangSmith and the LangGraph. In my last video, we covered about LangChain, at least high level things, what LangChain is and how it works. Let me introduce you to LangSmith now and then we'll go to LangGraph. What is LangSmith basically? So if I click on LangSmith, it will go to the LangSmith page. And the first thing that you can see here LangSmith is all in one developer platform for every step of LLM powered application lifecycle. Whether you are building a LangChain or not, debug, collaborate, test and monitor your LLM application. So basically for debugging, monitoring what your application is doing internally for that purpose. And in this video, what we are going to do is we are going to build an end to end application and we are going to monitor that using LangSmith. So this is how my application will look like. Okay. This is what we are going to build now from scratch. So here uh, there is a very famous book. This is one of my favorite books. So I take this example quite often. This book is called Atomic Habits by James Clear. And here, you know, the discussion is about how to make good habits and how to get rid of bad habits, etc. So this is the document that I'll be building a rag system, Q&A system. And I can ask anything through this document. Okay. For example, I'm saying how to build good habits, tell in five small points. And I can also say, for example, now how to get rid of bad habits, please tell in five small points. And if I say this, right, I'm going to get response, for example, how to get rid of bad habits, reduce exposure, reframe your mindset, blah, blah, blah. Whatever I'm doing here. I am monitoring it in my LangSmith project. So I'm going to my LangSmith. And if you can see here in my LangSmith page, right? Whatever question I asked now, for example, now I asked this one. Okay. How to get rid of bad habits? Tell me in five small points. So here in my retrieval QA, this is the query. This is the answer. What is my vector store retriever doing? How many tokens it is giving? How much time it is taking? What is the cost of this? If I go to chat open IE as my model, right? How many tokens? What is the cost? How much time it took? What, what does the system say? What is the user input? All the details are here. So from here, what I can do is I can debug, I can monitor and I can plan the execution of my model in a better way. Okay. So what we are going to do now is we are going to build this end to end system from scratch. And I'm going to show you how to track your um, applications or LLM apps from LangSmith and LangChain combination basically. First of all, to set this up, right? To set this LangSmith thing, when you click on, so if you go to LangSmith, right? There will be a sign up and sign in, obviously. You can sign in freely. Once you sign in, right? There will be a section like this where it will tell you tracing projects, okay? In this tracing project, what you have to do is you have to create a new project. At the moment you create a new project, right? It will ask you to create a API key. Now, first time if you are doing generate an API key and keep it safe somewhere. Fine. Then you have to install these dependencies. And remember, this becomes your project name. So from this name, right, you can track. Fine. This will be your project name. If you noticed, my project name was something different. For you, when you create, this will be your project name. And these are your environment variable. Very, very important. Please try to understand this. Do not copy paste this in Python. These are your environment variable, which means these need to be part of your .env file. So in your .env file or export, if you are using Linux, Mac, etc. But these are your environment variables. Okay. So in my case, what I have done is I have pasted all these things in my .env file. So obviously here my API key will come and here my OpenAI API key will come. Rest everything will be same. Just paste it in your .env file. Fine. Once you do that, and then if you import your .env file and run any LangChain application in that project, right, it will be traced here. So the tracing results will be shown here. Like, like for me, it is showing here. 
So let me go ahead and ask something else. How to, what are five benefits of, what are five benefits of good habits? So this is a new question I'm asking. So this also should be tracked by my uh, project. So for example, if I come here, right, what are five benefits? I just asked and it is getting tracked. So if you create a project and if you in, uh, import your environment variable, your language method will track and then you can easily trace it. With that in mind, let's go ahead to my Visual Studio and try to create a new project altogether from scratch. So let's go ahead and try to create some directory structure here. The first folder that I'm creating here will be documentation. Okay. So in this documentation, what I'm going to put is I'm going to put my PDF, which will be my knowledge source. Basically, the second uh, directory that I want to create here will be templates because as you saw in the front end, I need some templates to put my code here. Okay. And third thing that I want here is basically app.py. So here I will put all my uh, Python codes basically. And then I'll keep putting whatever I need. But first of all, let's start putting some Python code. And in the documentation, right, I will just put the file in the background so that, uh, you know, that becomes as a knowledge source for me. So I have put the file in the background, Atomic Habits Gems Clear. That will become my knowledge source in the background. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to create my app.py. So how my app.py will look like? So what all things I need to do? So first of all, what I need to do is I need to import some packages. So I'm importing from Langchain and from Flask because Flask is what I will be using for front end. Okay. So render template, JSONify from Flask course course is one that will help me to, you know, generate the output in the front end. And from LangChain community, I'm taking document loader because I'll be loading the document, directory loader, PyPDF PDF loader because I'll be loading the PDF, character splitter because I'll be splitting the characters. I have shown all these in my previous videos, how these things work, okay? You can see some of these in the previous LangChain videos. Once this happens, right, what I'm going to do is, as I told you, my LangChain key, my Langsmith key and my OpenAI key all are in this .env file. So I am putting dot, I'm importing .env here. So if I do this, what is going to happen is my Langsmith key and my OpenAI key, all these things is going to get imported now. So my, my project will trace what, what I'll be doing now. Okay. And then I'm going to simply write app is equal to Flask name. This is basically a Flask application I'm going to build. And if you say, course app that simply tells that there is a cross referencing between the content. So basically content will be presented on the front screen. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write a function called initialize rag. So basically it's a very simple function. What the job of the function is it will load a document. It will split it and it will use a document DB. So these things we have done many times actually. So if you see here, right, it will use directly loader. It will go to documentation here and it will pick any PDF file that you put there. Okay. And it will use by PDF loader in the background. Then it will split in the chunks. I have shown you in the last video as well, these things, it will split it into chunks. And then what it is going to do is it is going to create text splitter and it is split documents. Now documents is ready to be creating embedding. So we can create the document embedding. So what we can do is we can simply create embedding. Okay, so this also I have shown you in past video. And then what we can do is we can create a chain. In that chain, we will call all these things that is happening. For example, here I'm saying chat open AI, model name this, retriever QA chain type, LLM, LLM, chain type stuff, and retriever is vector store as retriever. So this is my QA chain. So basically what is happening here is this PDF file will get converted into embeddings and that will get stored into the vector database obviously um, by, you know, doing the text splitting, etc. Okay. And then this is my rag chain. In this rag chain, what I can do is I can use the large language model and I can use the retrieval QA type and I can interact with the vector database. So that's all that is happening here. Okay. Now this is, this is my rag function that I wrote just now, but I also need a front end basically. Okay. So I will initialize my rag. I will initialize my rack 
and I need a front end as well, right? So for front end, I'm going to use Python like this, uh, Flask like this. So first of all, the first page that should come is render template index.html. So I need to define an index.html here. So let me write here index.html, how my page should look like. This will define that, okay? And then app.root ask. So when, when I give a question, right? Then qhn.run, qhn will run with that question, okay? So when qhn will run with that question, that means initialize rag will run with that question. When initialize rag will run with that question, then it will return the qhn output, okay? So that will be our response. So basically this from here to here is the flask and from here to here is a simple rag definition. So this is our, our application. And the only last thing that need to be built here is index.html. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paste index.html file there and that will act as a front end for us. Okay, so simple. This is simple a web page. Don't think much about what it is and what it does. And let me change Langchain QA system demo for YouTube. Okay, and here Langchain QA system for YouTube learners. So I'm changing it so that there is some variation between what I previously built and what I now built. And then this is my chain. Everything is fine to run. Let me go ahead and try to execute this and see what happens. Okay. New terminal. And I'm going to simply say Python app.py. Let's see what happens now. So what I'm expecting is a new window should open and there we can ask question. And remember, since I have used the dot ENB where I have stored my Langsmith configuration, whatever I do here will get tracked in my Langsmith project. Okay. So this is the first time this project is running. So it is probably creating the embedding etc. in the background. So let the embedding etc. create and let the things run. Let's give it some time and then we can see how it is working. So here it has come. Let me go to the link. So this is Langchain QA system for YT learners. And I can ask here, please tell me five basic points about habits in small, um, small bullets. Okay. So I'm asking five basic points about habits. So we can also go to this uh, book and we can ask something. For example, 1% better every day. What is the meaning of this? For example, what is meaning of 1% better every day? Okay. So let, let's ask this. The concept of 1% better every day refers to idea of making small. So this is basically our Q&A system. And if I go to my Langsmith project, right, as I told you, it will be tracking whatever I'm doing there. Okay. So two questions I ask now, please tell me five basic of this. So this is the response for that. As you can see, this is the query I asked. This is the result that I got. And if I go inside, right? So vector store retriever, what it did, which documents it went to. So here also it will see, you see, right? These are the information, more information about which documents it is interacting to. Okay. And then the time, the, the tokens, etc. And then what is chat open AI doing? So this much of charge is there for, for running this query. These many tokens, this is the latency and these are the timings, etc. Okay. Similarly for the second thing, um, what is the meaning of 1% better every day? So you can see here, you can see the response and similarly these things. So I wanted to give you an idea of how Langsmith works, guys. There is more to it, but just try to create a project. Try to run LLM app, the same app that I built. I'll give you the code and you can practice on based of that. Okay. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, wherever you are. Stay safe and take care.